Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. All cameras, big and small, work on the same fundamental principle. Light going through a lens and hitting a sensor where it gets processed and converted into the image you see on your screen. With more light, generally meaning better image quality. That's why bulky DSLR and mirrorless cameras with their big interchangeable lenses and their larger sensors are the weapon of choice for professional photographers. So, given that the sensors inside smartphone cameras haven't actually increased much in size since they were debuted by Sharp almost two decades ago, how can their image quality be so much better today than it was then? Well, one big improvement is in the number of receptor sites on the sensor, which is typically measured in millions of pixels or megapixels. Improvements in microscale manufacturing have allowed manufacturers to cram many times more of these onto your camera's sensor. And the more of them you have, the more light samples can be collected, giving you a finer image. Uh, at least to a point. As you can learn more about in this episode, adding more megapixels stops helping and can even hinder image quality past a certain point. So there's got to be more to it. And there is. From our previous episode explaining aperture, you might know that every lens has a rating or a range of rating in f-stops. The lower the f-stop, the wider it can open up and the more light can pass through. This will improve image quality, especially in situations where there isn't much ambient light, like in the club. But another aspect of the lens that isn't so easy to read off of a spec sheet is its composition. In the early days of cell phone cameras, cheap plastic or composite lenses were used. Not only were they less clear and more likely to distort the light passing through them, blurring the image, they were much more prone to scratching, even against the materials in your pocket, meaning that over time, your camera's performance would degrade. Modern lenses, by contrast, are engineering marvels, crafted from exotic materials like sapphire glass with multiple carefully engineered elements in them for much better clarity and with some extra tricks as well. Back to our club shot for a minute. One of the ways to get around low light conditions is to simply leave the shutter open for longer, allowing it to capture more of those precious photons. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who's tried to quickly snap a pic of something dark, only to realize that it's crazy blurry. Well, one trick of modern lenses to compensate for handshake under darker conditions is to use gyroscope data combined with electromagnets around the lens to help your phone camera stay still. This is called optical image stabilization. Of course, no one would want a crystal clear image if it looked like this. Let's talk about dynamic range. In a nutshell, if your dynamic range is poor, it will cause bright areas to be blown out and dark areas to lose detail or crush. Some newer smartphones compensate for this though by saving multiple frames at different exposure levels every time you press the shutter button. Then they can analyze these frames and average them in a way that minimizes blur and noise algorithmically. A little like mixing strong and weak coffee to make something that's drinkable. Of course, that leads us perfectly into another improvement faster processors. Modern phone SOCs not only have better CPUs and GPUs in them, allowing them to quickly perform the functions I just mentioned and provide further assistance to optically stabilized lenses, even at high speed in burst modes or while recording slow motion video, but some of them even have specialized hardware, usually branded as a neural processor or AI processor that can be trained to identify the subject of the video or photo, adjusting the color processing to best capture the shooter's intent. Which leads us perfectly then to focus. We've all seen it. A gorgeous, detailed shot of the wall behind your friend. Traditional phone cameras relied on contrast detection to correctly focus on the subject of a photo, which means that they used brightness differences in the scene to determine where to focus. This is an inexact science at best. More advanced modern phones can use phase detection, a technique which analyzes how the left and right sides of the lens see slightly different images to decide on the focus, with some of them also using infrared lasers that fire at the object of a photo to determine the distance, similar to a police radar gun. 
on the subject of depth detection too. An increasing number of phones recently are using two cameras or even more, with at least one of them being equipped with a wider lens. Not only does this allow for otherwise impossible wide angle shots, because at this point anyway, you can't change out the lens on a smartphone, but it also enables much easier depth sensing, meaning that these phones can simulate depth of field or bokeh effects for an artistic and dramatic blurred background. Cool then, right? So with all this technology jam packed into our phones, why even buy a separate digital camera? Well, because it's important to remember that some of the awesome results that you see with smartphone cameras are due to approximations. For example, the depth of field effect on a modern smartphone is applied in software at the point where the phone thinks the focus should change. That means that under anything but ideal conditions, your mileage may vary significantly. Also, since the sensors inside phones are still quite small, they continue to struggle in low light because they simply can't see enough photons to make a good looking image in many cases. Combine that with the inability to put even a decent optical zoom on a phone without making it quite a bit fatter, and it suddenly all makes sense why professionals still use traditional cameras. Even so though, for things like casual shots of your kids and drone footage, phone cameras have become an incredibly powerful and versatile tool, especially important for the Tinder era. Speaking of Tinder, do you ever find yourself not trying to find a date, but trying to figure out your accounting? Well, FreshBooks is the cloud-based accounting software that's designed for you. It's the simplest and easiest way to be more productive, more organized, and perhaps most importantly, get paid quickly. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games and you can take the whole experience with you on the go with their iOS and Android apps. FreshBooks is offering a 30 day unrestricted free trial to our viewers. So to claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. We're going to link that down below. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible, and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Did I, did I mention that yet? Don't forget to subscribe. Meanwhile, people be like, yeah, I didn't forget, yo.